Okay, we're here at the home on Lookout Mountain, or actually sort of behind Lookout Mountain, of Elaine Sponsler and Mark Miller. And uh, Mark, you want to give us an overview of the house before we go inside? Sure. Um, the uh, one-story cabin is what we bought in 1982. And then from uh, 1988 to 1990, we added the solar uh, addition. Uh, that's a heat collecting system there. Uh, and then there's uh, domestic hot water panels at the base of that. Mm -hmm. uh, two years ago, we finally added a photovoltaic system, which is a ground mounted system. Right. Uh, that provides uh, all of our electricity now, and, and the house is totally electric. So uh, we're. No gas or propane? No gas or propane. Okay, so let's go inside and look at the uh, details. All right. Oh, uh, I might point out the vent windows at the top there. Uh, those are open in the summer when the system is turned off and we don't need to collect heat. Okay. So now now we're in the house and Mark, you want to tell us what we're looking at? Okay, this, this is the original house here. Mm -hmm. it, it originally ended uh, right here. This was the back wall. Mm -hmm. So when we added on, then we added all of this. This was uh, all just a pretense to hold up the solar collector, basically. Oh, okay. And I think we, uh, you were telling me that it was a 1938 cabin, that part. That... Uh, yes, we found newspaper insulation in the wall there from uh, 37 and, uh, 36. 36 and 37. Okay. Um, we can go upstairs and look okay. at the uh, collector from Ooh. the inside, because okay. a lot of people are curious about what it looks like inside. Okay, let's go up there. So we just came up those stairs and we're in your master bedroom, right? And that's yes. uh -huh. presumably the master bath in there. Yeah. I like this uh, spiral staircase because we're climbing up quite a ways, aren't we? Yes. Yes, it's uh, basically a four-story building. Okay, okay, so now we're at the top of that spiral staircase and my attention is drawn immediately to these beautifully diagonally mounted skylights here. You would not want those facing any direction but north because uh, yes. the sun that comes through there in the summer is very intense. Right, so this is the south facing wall and we don't actually see the solar collector but I see, you, I mean the heat collector, but I see you created a little window here and you have a little explanation right here. So why don't you go through this? Yes, uh, the, uh, there's double glazing, it's patio door lights, it's uh, 480 square feet. Uh, and then there's a probably a almost a 10 inch space to the black metal deck. Uh, it was just a corrugated steel deck that was painted black. Mm -hmm. There's a little air space behind that. Then there's foil faced um, fiberglass bat, or not bat, but compressed fiberglass insulation, uh, plywood, and then the two by eight walls with bat insulation inside of that. Mm -hmm. So we don't really care what the temperature is in the collector. We're insulated from it in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, it can get very hot in there. It can get very cold. It uh, doesn't matter to the to the house. Yeah. The uh, the air is drawn by paddle uh, paddle fan. It convects to the top, and it's pulled uh, pulled down to the basement. This is the air duct in the corner here. This oh, the triangular space. thing. Yeah. That goes all the way to the basement. Yeah. There, there are ladders in there if you want to climb up inside the collector. Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Probably very warm today. Okay, so so that takes the heat all the way down to the rocks in the basement, which yes. store the heat. Right. Yes. Okay, good. Let's go down to the basement. So now we're in the basement, and uh, tell us what we're looking at here. Well, this is uh, temperature gauges for the system. We have the top of the collector and the bottom of the collector. The system is turned off right now. Oh, okay. But uh, that's just uh, the air convecting out. It's up to 96 at the top. The rock storage is just coasting. It's uh, 61 at the bottom and 67 at the top right now. In the winter, when this is heated up, it'll get up to maybe 105 degrees at the top of the rocks. Um, that'll be enough heat. Uh, it, it takes maybe three or four days to charge up. Mm -hmm. And that's, it stores enough heat for two or three days. The system probably provides 60 or 70 percent of our, our heat in the winter. Mm -hmm. The rest is electric baseboard for backup heat. Mm -hmm. um, this is the return air filter here. All the house air goes back through this filter. Uh, it goes down into this, on the other side of this wall is a, an air duct at the bottom. This is the cold air duct from here to the floor. Um, and then this is the hot air duct from here. Oh, they're horizontal there. ducts. They're horizontal. When the paddle fan is running, um, this is what it sounds like. Okay. Now that's moving air uh, from the collector down through the rocks. So the hot air is going in uh, through the, uh, mm -hmm. the duct, and then it goes across through uh, six-inch diameter plastic tubes 
down through the rocks and it's collected by six inch diameter tubes at the bottom coming back to the cold air duct, which then returns it to the uh, collector. So that's one loop. There's two loops. There's a loop through the, through the rocks and through the collector, and then the other loop is through the rocks and through the house. Mm -hmm. um, these systems can operate independently or they can operate at the same time. So there's several different airflow paths. Mm -hmm. It's all automatic. We don't basically do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's controlled by a thermostat upstairs. When the house uh, thermostat calls for heat, if there's enough heat in the rocks, a blower turns on and it pulls the hot air off the top of the rocks and ducts it through the house. I see. Okay. Uh, if you want to follow over here, okay. we can take a look at the uh, water water system. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, this is the 80-gallon uh, uh, storage tank that's directly heated by the sun mm -hmm. through the panels. Mm -hmm. And then that, that gets hot, usually, if there's enough sun. That hot water then feeds into the electric water heater, which... Oh, it's preheating the cold water for the electric hot water Exactly. Heater. It comes out right. of the well at about 55 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we need to see? Well, here? if you want to take a look in the rock room here, you oh, can okay. uh, see the uh, actual rocks. Okay. Are they lit up? Take a peek in there. Nah, it might be a little dark. Let's see if the camera can pick up. Oh, it's just small rocks. Yes. Um, yeah. I had a friend that was an engineer that did some research and determined that for quick heat transfer and for air passage, the three-quarter inch washed river rock was just about optimum. Okay. Got it. 800 cubic, oh, 1,800 cubic feet. Uh, 800 cubic oh. feet, uh, oh, about okay. 25 tons of rock. Oh, wow. Okay. And does that end our tour? That does. Uh, we can take a look at the temperatures again because they've probably changed now that the fan is running. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that was 97 or 96 or so. Now it's dropped to 90. Because you've taken the, heat off. We're, and... we're pulling the cool air, circulating the air. Right. Possibly drawing in some outdoor air through the vents as well. Right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the tour. You're welcome. So before we leave, I've asked Mark to show us his greenhouse, which is in this Quonset hut-shaped structure behind his garage and workshop. This uh, at one point was a residence in the 50s. We turned it into a greenhouse. This was a residence, oh. Uh, the rock storage in And here, it is a Quonset hut, isn't it? It is a Quonset hut. Because I see the metal, but it's not obvious from the other end that it's metal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, and in here we have, uh, I think, uh, an inch and a half of foam insulation on the outside. Oh, okay. The metal, try and keep the metal warm. Okay. So, because in the past, when originally the metal got cold and sweated, I mean, water condensed on mm -hmm. it, so we try and keep it warm. This, uh, this rock storage under here is similar to the house system. Um, and, and during the day when it's hot in here, uh, the fans turn on by a thermostat, pull the warm air in this big tube, goes down and it's distributed through the rocks and blown out at the front here. Here's this the explanation. A little diagram of how this system works. It, it also has the two corrugated tubes to distribute air across the rock bed and then the air comes through the rocks between the tubes. Okay. Uh, so during the day we're collecting heat, we're getting the rocks warm. Uh, late afternoon the system will turn off and then if, if it does get cold in here, uh, another thermostat will turn the fans back on, and we, we blow warm air out to warm the uh, greenhouse. Good, good, and it works all winter that way. Uh -huh. it's, you don't have any artificial heating in here? Well, we do, but I don't think it ever runs. Oh, okay. And uh, what do you rate, grow in here besides cactus, which probably doesn't really need this? Well, no, but it gets too hot in here to grow many things. Uh, okay. Elaine starts flowers in here in the springtime. Yeah flower boxes mm -hmm. and gardens. So you don't feed yourself with vegetables from here over the no, winter? No, we tried, but the orientation of this building is not too good. It's actually facing um, much more east than south. Oh, okay. So it's not a good orientation. Okay. Well, thanks again for the tour, and uh, we'll put it up on YouTube.